Hey, Sneaky Linux is back. We're back. We're back. We're back. Sneaky Linux is back. Right, what Linux for you? Yeah, back in the series. Oh, at last, got some time. I know what you're saying. Okay. Today, what Linux for you? Well, this is Peppermint 8. Now, I've used Peppermint 8, on, well, it's not Peppermint 8, but Peppermint OS on and off for quite a long time, like years and years and years. And it's always a breath of fresh air, to be honest with you, because it's LXD based at the end of the day, but a lot of minty stuff in there, a bit of cinnamon stuff in there, a bit of a mixer, a bit like you're making a cake, and you mix it all in a bowl, and you get some pepperminty goodness come out at the end of it, which is what we like at the end of the day. So I've installed it. Quite nice, okay. Okay in the box, but not super duper. I'll to come to that a bit later. Okay, anyway, we'll just have a quick look. It's usual, so it's LXDE. So you've got time and date, Keldos, my language, volume, that computer -y thing there, my Ethernet connection, and I've updated it and added a couple of programs. All worked hunky dory, nicey nicey, as it normally always does, okay. Now, Peppermint is a distribution where it's really, really stripped back, sort of, so you can actually use really web apps to use it. A bit like Chrome OS, but not, if you know what I mean. But with Peppermint, you get the option to install the uh, programs you want, say LibreOffice, or Happy Word, or Gnumeric, or Steam, onto the system that you want to use. So it's not purely a web-based OS, okay? It is installed on your system, and you can still add stuff, but to make it lighter and quicker, this is what they've done. So I'm going to do a terminal for you, okay, and show you how much it's using at the moment. So I've installed HTOP. It comes with top by default, so HTOP, and you see what's going down. And as you can see, 310, 311 megabytes of RAM is really, really, really good for a Ubuntu-based distro in this day and age. I could go back day, years and years and days and days and months and months. So we went to the early Peppermints and early LXDEs, and you would only be, be using, say, 160, 150, 140. But obviously things are moving on. There's more processors. Lots of stuff in there, 64 bit. Everybody's got more RAM. We're not just restricted to 512 or 1 gig anymore. I mean, my own system at home is 64 gig. I don't have to used it all, but I might do it in a couple of years' time. Who knows? When I upgrade, who knows? It's using no CPU here whatsoever. If I click here, I want to do something else. Yeah, I think it goes into a little bit of a mist. Can you see that? Mist. But yeah, that's all right. So it doesn't use any resources whatsoever, really, for a Ubuntu-based distro. Remember, it's based on 16.04. This is version 2. So, well, update 2. You know one. 16.04.02, blah, 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 blah. But this is a long-term development. So it's going to be supported for 1, 2, 3. Was it 2020, 2021? Something like that. So that's going to last you a real long time. So if you install it now, you can just keep using it and then when it finishes, just get another one. Or your system might be too old to do it. Anyway, so I want to close it. Okay, back we go. As you can see, I've done all that down there, blah, 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 blah. So I've got two desktops down here. You can have as many as you like. It's up to you. On the taskbar down this end, on the left-hand side, you get a VLC, terminal, your files, and Chromium is your default browser. Okay. So I'll open it up and see what happens. And while we're doing it, I'll have a little bit of drinking drink. Mm -hmm. Took a long time. Let me do. Okay. DuckDuckGo is your search engine of choice here. This is the main screen you get when you open Peppermint. Sorry, Chromium from the start. So we click on Peppermint Home. And it takes you straight to their site. So here you can download the 30-bit, 32-bit version or the 64-bit version. Excuse me, I've had some apples juice tonight, so you have to bear with me. Or purchase a USB and a user guide also. Now, as far as I'm aware, this probably will be the last 32-bit version unless you make it from scratch. So as it's like a, sort of a remix, but not by Peppermint, you might not get another 32-bit version. But bearing in mind, 64-bit CPUs have been around for a good long while now. If you're still using a 32-bit processor, maybe it could be time to move on. You know what I'm saying? Of course you do. Yeah. Anyway, so if we go to user guide, just quickly show you that. I'm not going to do too much here. So download and install, intro to the desktop, cu oh, customising the desktop. Let's see what happens there if we click there. So you can choose your wallpapers. Yeah, I've done all that. I've done it and loads of stuff. But it just tells you how to do it. So there is a little like guide here for you to do it. So if I come out of there and right click the desktop and we go to, where are we? Change desktop background. 
there is plenty of backgrounds here for you to choose. So I'll just scroll down to some old ones and then some new ones. That looks alright, doesn't it? Have a look. Apply. Ooh, that's nice. A bit orangey. That's a nice desktop background. Remember, you can add your own whenever you feel like it. Another reason to use Peppermint is it is really, really quick and it does run with a thing Buntu based or Debian based. So, for instance, the games here are mostly web games apart from. Is Mahjong web based? We'll find out. Yes, it is web based. It's a web based one. You can install one directly to your system if you want to. Okay. So they're all web based there. Anyway, we'll quickly go down here for you. I'm not going to go down to favourites recently or anything like that. So, additional drivers. So, if you've got a system that's got an NVIDIA card or an AMD card, install the drivers, done. Wireless chipsets, etc., etc. It's all there. There's a BitTorrent client here already installed for you. A calculator's there for you. All it does is adds things up. You know, does what it says. Uh, what would be really interesting if, if this was your Linux that you wanted to run? Okay, uh, under graphics. Well, as you can see, the only real one you get here is simple skim. The rest is nearly all online, apart from the document viewer, which is doesn't tell me. Should we go to help about? It's document viewer. Cool. Says what it does on the tin. What more can I say? Under Office, there is no Office apps. They're all online. But if you want to install LibreOffice, you can go and do it if you want to. That's up to you. Internet, get your BitTorrent client, Chrome user web browser, Dropbox, that's web-based. ICE, it's if you want to add a uh, an internet application to your desktop, this is how you do it. So you name the application, copy and paste the address in here. Where in the menu do you want it? Do you want to select an icon? Yeah, or use Favicon for an icon? And off you go. Really simple as that. I'm not going too much into this because there's the other guys, the newer guys from uh, doing the tutorials, they can do these. I'm doing other stuff now. Like a lot of us older guys are doing a lot of complete other stuff. But I just want to show you, if you want a Linux that's a bit different, but is Buntu based, and Debian of course, this could be the one for you. Under preferences, you get so much here. The only thing I thought was a bit weird, if I scroll down, where's it gone? There we go, look. Force Thunderbird to use light theme. Well, it doesn't have Thunderbird installed. So, would you want that there to the first place? I'm not too sure. But do I care? Not really. Because it just runs and works. This is the thing nowadays. Most Linux distributions will work perfectly out of the box. Obviously, with this one here, if you're going to do web apps, it's going to work. But if you want them installed yourself, it's okay. It just means you need to do a bit of work to install them. I'm going to quickly show you that before we finish. So, we go to... Where we go? System tools. So we've got a software manager there. We can go to the software manager. I'll click it and open it. Put in my password. And see what comes up. This is one of the minty things, I think. Okay. Yeah, it looks a bit minty, doesn't it? Okay. So if I put in up here Abbey Word, which is a word processing app, or program as we would like to call it. Abbey Word. And there, we'll and there it is. You can just click on it. Yeah, it's alright. Do we double click on it? Install it? Why not? It's not very big, is it? It's not installed. Okay, what do we do? I don't know. Ongoing actions, we're waiting for them, are we? Okay, it's not doing anything for me. Ooh, that's not good, is it? Now, why is that happening? Maybe I've not used it enough. Okay. So click install again. Ooh, see, it's not happening. Now, I had this earlier with HTOP, okay? I'm going to come out of that. I'll go to the menu again. I'm going to go to Office. Oh, no, be word. So, if I go down to Preferences or System Tools, there's Synaptic. I'm going to open Synaptic up, put my password in again. Anybody else had this problem? Because HTOP wouldn't do it either. Not even from the command line, okay? So, if I search here. Oh, that'd be words there, hang on. So, click there. Mark for installation. Okay. Uh, have unresolvable dependencies. Make sure all the repositories are added under the settings. Mm, okay. Okay. Whoa. What do you know? Mark for installation. You can't do it at the moment. Hmm. I thought it was just me. Yeah, I thought it was just me. So that's one little problem, maybe. I don't know. But then again, it's not really meant for 
having system stuff installed on your system. But yeah, what do you know? I hope they get sorted out real soon. Sneaky as that. Not really liking that. Bye bye.